Well, good afternoon, College of Eastern Idaho, and, and hopefully we'll have some guests on as well. It's been quite a while uh, since I've done one of these uh, uh, president forums uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, we're just talking about probably a year and a half, something like that. Anyway, this is a uh, this is going to be a fascinating topic, I think, for the for the college, and I, I think a lot of you either know quite a bit about chat GPT, or, or maybe this is your first experience with it. And it's gonna be interesting to see how it changes things uh, for the college and how it changes things for us as we begin to use this. And maybe even more importantly for a college, what happens with teaching and learning with, uh, with chat GPT. So I, I guess what I would say is, um, this version 3.5, which is the free version, uh, is the version that I was uh, acquainted with in November of last year. And then actually, I think a lot of you know, we do futuring at the college. So we brought the leadership team together and um, uh, I demonstrated a little bit of chat GPT 3.5 in December as, as part of a discussion with futuring for the college. And one of the things that I, I put in as a prompt was this idea of the future of a community college. And it was just amazing what came, uh, what came back from that. And again, I think uh, there are two main purposes at least for, for the level we're at right now of, uh, of chat with colleges. And, and one would be administrative purposes. So kind of that idea of how do we become more efficient? How do we become more accurate? How, how do we do things? Uh, how do we find information that would be beyond what we normally would use? And I think you'll find uh, chat GPT to, to work in that realm. And by the way, that's what this discussion is going to be about. Obviously, and far more complex, is the use of chat GPT or any of these AI uh, formats in teaching and learning. That just uh, opens up a whole nother array of issues and problems and opportunities, I guess, depending on how we want to think about this is a, a uh, this as an opportunity. So um, that that would be for another day. But but for today, some of you maybe have never seen this before. And I, I guess the thing that is interesting, and, and uh, I'm, I'm going to show a little timeline in a second, but for those of you that remember um, GPS for the first time, that is uh, that was an amazing technology, and, and some of you grew up with it, so it's not any particular big deal. But for those of us that were accustomed to using maps, it changed everything. Uh, and I think technology is changing everything. And, and pretty clearly, uh, AI, chat, GPT in this case, is changing everything. And I don't know if you're familiar with Arthur C. Clarke, but there is a great quote that would be... Um, an interesting way to start off uh, this discussion of, uh, of chat GPT. And he says, any sufficiently advanced technology is in indistinguishable from magic. And again, if this is your first look at this, you probably uh, would equate this to magic. So uh, my job today is to introduce you to this, introduce the college to this, and maybe open up some conversations. So here's what, um, here's what we're going to look at today in about 45 minutes. So uh, chat may be the most significant technology of our lifetime, and there has been a lot of technology in our lifetime. So as I mentioned, uh, there are two purposes of it. One is administrative, one is instructional, and uh, we, we will shy away from instruction at this too just too big a topic and not enough is known yet. So the interesting thing about um, just in a, in a high level overview of what uh, artificial intelligence is in this case, it is a large language model, which is a very descriptive, um, you know, very descriptive in what this is in database uh, language. And 
I want you to think about, because nobody could know what these numbers are, but literally it has access to 100 trillion bits of data. I mean, that's inconceivable. For me, a million is inconceivable, and that's multiple factors above that. So uh, today is going to be chat GPT awareness. So you all can log in. I don't know if you have or have not, but if you do on the screen here, you're going to see uh, a login prompt, and this is the way you get into chat GPT. So it's simply chat.openai.com. And you can go in that. You're going to have to give a cell phone number to get into it and then um, an email and, and you can get in. And 3.5 is the free version. It's not going to cost you anything, but a great place to uh, go in and, uh, and think about use this. Now, let me let me thank Emma Getliff, who is here. She's in the background, kind of like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. Uh, kind of managing what's going on with uh, uh, with the um, with the presentation and bringing up a couple of things that I'd like to talk about. So Emma, thank you for being here. She'll keep an eye on uh, any of the physical chats that may come up, and we'll we'll see how far we get into it. But let me let me set a little bit of context because the bulk of what I want to do today is actually bring up chat. Uh, and put in some prompts, and I want you to think about how those prompts work. But look through that list of the PC evolution and some of the stuff you've never heard of before, because it, it uh, predates you by quite a bit. But uh, I, I guess maybe when it comes to a computer, 2077 would be the Radio Shack TRS-80, and that's kind of the first... Um, really the first computer, desktop computer, and it goes down through uh, just a variety of things. I've collected these, and interestingly enough, I use chat GPT to, to find these and cull through this because it is interesting how this all flowed out. I, I remember when Mosaic and Netscape was a thing, and just this whole idea of the internet and then being able to browse the internet with, with Netscape and Internet Explorer and down through the World Wide Web, which is a graphical user interface. All of these have changed uh, the way we as educators do our job. Um, Google came about uh, in uh, 1997. And quite frankly, I think right now Google is a verb, not a, not a noun. iTunes, Google Maps, um, Zoom. All of those things have begun to emerge and chat GPT 3.5 became a, uh, an entity in uh, uh, really last year, kind of in November. So uh, again, depending on how old you are, and I remember all these because I'm a lot older than many of you, some of these things you've never heard of, but when it comes to magic, a uh, word processor, because we're, we were used to a selectic, selectric typewriter, and the best you could do is backspace uh, with whiteout. So WordStar was in 1979, and WordPerfect was a big one and has subsequently disappeared. And, of course, we're accustomed to multiple versions of uh, Microsoft Word. Probably for me, spreadsheets was the thing that was most life-changing, and VisiCalc was the first one. And then Lotus 1, 2, 3 was around for quite some time. And um, Multiplan, Quattro Pro, and now we're accustomed again to the Microsoft Excel uh, as a product. Here is something that is really important, because when you measure technology, you measure that in 100 million user increments. How long does it take for 100 million users uh, to embrace a technology? So as you can see, it's kind of glanced down through this. It took 75 years for the telephone to reach 100 million users. Then that was cut by a significant factor with mobile phones at 16, World Wide Web at 7. Facebook took four years to get to uh, 100 million users. Google actually took one year to get to 100 million users. TikTok took nine months to get to 100 million users, and then chat GPT 
believe it or not, took two months to go to 100 uh, million users. It's just something that is incomprehensible, I guess, with the adoption. So it's been ad adopted uh, quite rapidly. So here's what I want to talk about uh, in particular today. Um, and let's just talk about mainly I'm, I'm going to be demonstrating just chat GPT, but, but there are other tools that use the GPT model for data. So here, here are some restrictions or features that uh, you would probably need to know as you begin to use it. So as we get into uh, a, a chat scenario, it will remember what we've been talking about. And I'll, I'll show you that. So if we're talking about a particular topic, Yellowstone bears, for example, and we stay in that thread, questions that we ask uh, can be related right back to that. If we if we cancel close that particular flow, then you, you start back over. So it uh, it will al allow us as users to make changes and follow up corrections, and uh, I'm going to call it nuance for the purpose of our discussion today. And uh, you will notice as you begin to use this, maybe more as a friend or a buddy, um, as opposed to just simply going in and asking for it to generate a report, but uh, it, it will decline inappropriate requests. And that all is in uh, significant change. I don't know if anybody knows how that's going to evolve, but it's there and um, uh, it will scold you, uh, if you if you move in a, a wrong direction. So, the interesting thing now here, here is a limitation with a chat GPT 3.5. And that limitation is it goes up and ends in September of 2021. So if you ask chat GPT who the speaker of the house is, uh, it would be speaker Bedke, not, uh, not speaker Moyle. So it, uh, it doesn't go into the, the current world. It's been limited, but uh, for a lot of things that I do, that really doesn't matter at all. I'm not using it to get the most current uh, information. So chat GPT 3.5 um, um, kind of began um, in November of 2022. GPT 4.0, and that's a paid version of it. You've, 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 got, to, uh, you've got to pay, I think it's $20 a month. That opened on uh, March 14th of, uh, of this year, 2023. Another model that uses this uh, G chat GPT format would be Bing AI. Now, the interesting thing about Bing AI is that it is current information. It does know who the current speaker of the house is. So that, uh, that is current. Microsoft Copilot uh, also is a brand new product that uses this GPT format. And um, it uses current information and uh, you can go in and, uh, and use both, uh, well, I'm sorry, you can use Bing AI, uh, Microsoft Copilot, you can see examples of how it's used on, uh, um, uh, in, in Microsoft, but it isn't uh, available right now. And there's another under Google called BARD, which is also in the testing phase. So those are, those are the, uh, the functions, uh, the, the different models that you can use to access this 100 trillion database. So the key, uh, let's switch, yeah, we'll switch over to the key. Here are the things that uh, I want you to think about as we go through and begin to explore uh, some of the features of chat GPT. So the first thing is just simply the, the concept of creating a prompt. You're asking a question of, uh, of chat. And uh, the, the real idea is that this prompt creation is gonna be important. And the better the question, the better the result you're gonna get back from it. So good prompts are specific, they're clear, they're relevant uh, to the task. So that is the question. That's the first question you ask. It. Now the next part, and, and I kind of made up these three, and, and I, I think this is generally true for a new user. The iterations of a prompt become pretty important and you'll see what that means 
as we uh, begin to actually use the, the tool. But you get an answer and it's not quite the answer you want or you want more detail in that answer. Uh, iterations become crucial for improving the output of ChatGPT. So with uh, each iteration, you're gonna get a better and better result uh, for what you need. So we're after high quality results in this, and you'll see how this works. And uh, I, I think the third thing that I want you to consider as you're using chat is that nuance is an important element within a prompt. And, and I guarantee you there is no black and white as we get into chat GPT. There, there just isn't. There is a lot of nuance. There's nuance in its an answers to questions and nuance in the way that we ask for those. So what I'd like to do now is uh, simply jump in and let's explore some of the um, some of the options that would be possible for uh, chat. So I assume that you're able to see this. Okay, so you're seeing chat itself. And over here, I've been dealing with uh, CEI slogans. It remembers those things. And then I've been uh, asking it about futuring for uh, uh, for some of the questions that I'm going to work with. So let's let's just try this as we begin to, to enter into the, the use of chat. And I'm simply going to ask uh, what, the, what its name is. So what is your name? Now, you notice that I didn't have to put a question mark after this. I don't have to capitalize or anything like that. So it... Um, it says, I, I don't really have a name, but it will go by chat GPT. Now, GPT, generative uh, pre-trained transformer, uh, I, I don't know how you remember that, but GPTs are pretty important. That's the way that these are created. This model anticipates the next word. So you know that as you type into uh, maybe a word processor or email, there is an anticipation of the word that you're trying to put in. This is at a scale, a factor of a thousand as it thinks about uh, the next sequence of words. Now, something I could do, and I'll just show you this as we get into it a bit. Um, may I call you chat? Okay, so it's happy with that. I can I can call uh, this session of Chat GPT Chat, and it's fine with that. So, in your past lives, perhaps uh, you are familiar with the Velveteen Rabbit. So, the Velveteen Rabbit is a uh, just a wonderful book with a lot of uh, uh, a lot of principles and well written and uh, and well known and. I think a good way to start um, with this in using prompts would be uh, in using the Velveteen Rabbit. And because this is older than 2021, chat knows about it. So a, a good thing you could do, and this is true of anything that, that uh, chat would have access to, I'm going to ask it to summarize, oops, too many T's, but it's going to know that anyway. So summarize the Velveteen Rabbit. And there it uh, it's going through summarizing the story for us, which, you know, really is, is kind of amazing when, when you think about that. And uh, we're not going to read it or anything like that, but you see that it summarizes. Now we can begin to... Uh, manipulate that. This is where this idea of nuance and iteration come in. I'm not good at, at typing and talking, so it'll be quiet uh, for a moment while I'm, while I'm typing. So all, all of my all of my typing is now recording you know, into a YouTube for all all forever. So I 
I should have Emma typing for me. Let's summarize it for a fourth grader and see what it does. Okay, so it's using a lot simpler language for a fourth grader. And, uh, you know, you would, you would expect it to do that. that. That's something that it can do. Try this. I'm just going to say summarize and not put Velveteen Rabbit in. So summarize for a PhD. So this is good for... Now, by the way, my keyboard is putting those in, not me. So summarize for a PhD. And we'll scroll down. Okay, a lot more detail. How about, how about if we shorten the summary? Okay, so I, I think you're seeing some of those um, some of those prompts that you can work with. And again, depending on what you want for the output, the nuance that you want with that output, you can, you can ask um, chat to make those kinds of adjustments for you. And then you, you continue to iterate additional iterations with it. So a question might be, how long does it take to read Naturally, I'm having keyboard issues here. Okay, there we go. So how long would it take to read that? It knows. It knows it'd take about 30 minutes uh, to read. It, it knows that it's about 4,000 words. So you can pull those kind of things. Um, who are the main characters? Now, again, I didn't have to type in Velveteen Rabbit. We, we're in a stream of Velveteen Rabbit, so it knows that. And um, it's giving us those, uh, those characters mainly focused in the, uh, in the Velveteen Rabbit itself. So let's, let's do an outline. And again, uh, we have uh, an, an outline and a, a PowerPoint of this. So if you... Um, uh, if you would like to get the notes and some of these uh, prompts, uh, go ahead and send a note uh, to, there we go, email. Uh, so send an email to president's office at uh, cei.edu and we'll, we'll provide uh, both the PowerPoint and uh, this prompting for you. So let's outline this. Outline the story. Now we're using the Velveteen Rabbit just because it's easy and simple, but you can outline really anything that ChatGPT would have access to. So if that's something that you're, you're doing because you need it or you wanna get high points, you wanna get talking points. And again, remember the purpose of this overview, the, the kind of discussion we're having today is how might you use this in an administrative role within the college. So we can ask it to do an outline. Now we're gonna get into an interesting topic. Uh, I'm gonna to ask it to write, uh, let's go 200 word report. And I'm gonna ask for footnotes. See what happens with that. Well, there you go. So there are the footnotes. Now I, I know those of you um, that are teaching this, this uh, probably frightens you. It probably should. Um, 
let, let me show you a little trick here uh, that uh, you, you could try to do. By the way, I'm, I'm teaching a leadership class, an online leadership class this, uh, um, this spring semester. And uh, I turned out that this week I, I have a, a four page paper that's due with footnotes. So what I'm gonna do is copy what, um, what chat uh, had given me. And I'm gonna ask chat a question. Did you write this? Pretty straightforward question. Okay. So chat knew that it had written this uh, this report, and uh, it's something to consider. Now, by the way, I, I, I have one of those papers done, so I, I ran it through uh, chat, asked if it had written the student paper for this week, and that student student had not written the paper, it didn't recognize it and prompted me that way. And again, there is a ton of nuance in this, but if you want a really quick look to see if chat has written something, uh, that, that's a quick and easy way to, to do that. Um, you know, another thing that is kind of interesting, and, and let's try this, um, write six, true, false questions with answers about the story. Okay. So the last one, true or false, The Velveteen Rabbit is a classic classic children's book and has been adapted uh, into various forms of media. Well, the answer is true. Uh, you can do this with multiple choice if you wish to. Um, create a uh, three, three's good. Three question. See what that does. So it's giving you the question and it's giving you the answer. Uh, so this last question three, how does the Velveteen Rabbit become real? The answer is C, he is loved so much by the boy that he becomes real. So again, uh, just a number of features that if you know about those could be um, really important. You know, one of the things that I like, and again, I've only been using this uh, probably for five months or so, something like that, but nobody's been using it all that long. List five principles So let's see what kind of principles can come up uh, from chat. So uh, it talks about the power of love, the importance of connection, the, the value of imperfection. Now that's a unique one, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I would have picked that out as um, a principle, but that's, that's kind of inter interesting. Now remember that Chad is going out and is looking at all of the discussions about the Velveteen Rabbit and it's calling out five. If we did this again, it would come up with a different five. There is, you, you're never gonna see the same answer twice, or at least not in my experience with uh, chat GPT. So every time you generate a new, uh, you will get a new uh, response. How many versions? Okay, there's only one book uh, uh, titled that, but you'll notice that there are stage productions, television shows, and films uh, to that effect. So there is a lot of um, a lot of information. I, I, I 
I guarantee you that just with this idea of uh, the Velveteen Rabbit, if you play with something simple that you know quite a bit about, it will help you when you need to move into more complex uh, ideas. One of my absolute favorite uh, prompts is compare and contrast. So compare and contrast uh, the character I don't know how many of you watch Yellowstone, but I'm asking uh, ChatGPT to compare and contrast the character of the Velveteen Rabbit with Beth Dutton. You probably would say there is no comparison. There is only contrast. Let's see what we come up with uh, here uh, when we ask, uh, uh, ask Chat to go through and, uh, and do this compare and contrast. So... Um, Okay, comparing and contrasting personality, the Velveteen Rabbit is a shy and a gentle tool. Beth Dutton, on the other hand, is a strong, outspoken character who is fiercely protective within context. You know, this didn't give me exactly what I want, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to try this again. And again, this is the whole concept of iteration. So if you're not getting exactly what you want, you could try it again and see if you get a different response. Okay, the, the, the Velveteen Rabbit is uh, um, a transformative tale uh, about someone becoming uh, real through love while Beth, Beth Dutton's story is one of survival. And, protection of her family's legacy. So again, this idea of um, compare and contrast becomes really important. So one of the things, and I'll, I'll, I'll do just a couple of these um, really quickly, but uh, this can write a press release. So I, I am doing a lecture here. So let's, let's write a press release uh, about this lecture. So So I'm asking for a press release regarding um, this lecture by me uh, and the use of uh, ChatGPT and uh, uh, the Velveteen Rabbit. Now, by the way, uh, this is hugely dangerous when I do these kind of things because I don't know what is going to come up. So we're, uh, we're, we're taking a risk here to, to see uh, how this works. But again, we can do a press release. So uh, you know, people like Todd or uh, Amanda can put in information and ask for a press release. And the more information about that press release, the better uh, the press release could become. You'll, you'll notice that I am uh, excited to share the lessons of the Velveteen Rabbit with the CEI community, which I am. Okay. So it, it can put in um, quotes and those kind of things, uh, the lecture, um, uh, takes place uh, on the wrong date, but it's pretty close. But you can see, I think, how these kind of things can work. Now, we'll do one more thing, and then I'm going to switch over to another topic. And, and something you may not know, but let's let's try this. Um, write a poem about me. Doctor, let's just say Dr. Rick.
And then if uh, I want this in the style of Dr. Zeus, of course, because real poetry rhymes, as we all know. So let's just say in the um, uh, style. Let's see what comes up. Now this is really dangerous. Okay, so Dr. Rick had a lecture to give on the Velveteen Rabbit and how to live. He spoke of love, imagination, and more, and how they can help us open new doors. I'm still, I still have a job so far. This is good. The audience listened with wonder and awe as Dr. Rick spoke without a single flaw. Well, obviously it wasn't here. My typing, uh, it, it, I, clearly this is a problem of accuracy, but uh, he shared his insights, his thoughts, and his dreams, uh, and inspired all of this, uh, all of his powerful themes. He spoke of becoming real, of uh, love that's true, and how the Velveteen Rabbit can guide us through with creative passion and strategic thought. Uh, we can build a future that's strong, uh, stronger than rot. Uh, Dr. Rick's lecture was a true delight, a beacon of hope, and uh, in the dark of night. And as we left our hearts full of cheer, we knew that the future was ever so near. And I probably should have said four stanzas. I don't know how long this thing went on, but but there you go. You can actually do uh, you can actually do a poem with this. Let's uh, spend a little bit of time. And again, this is a demonstration of uh, of things. And I'm. I was interesting, uh, interested in futuring. So, first of all, um, I'm going I'm to switch topics. We're done with the, the rabbit. But what is futuring? Okay, and you can see that that comes up. It's a strategic planning process that anticipates planning for possible future scenarios. Futuring can be used in various um, um, uh, in various fields and for different outcomes, it is look. It's used for long-term planning. Let's see how. Let's compare and contrast. So compare and contrast. Featuring with strategic planning. Let's see what it says. I love bulleted lists. So it talks about uh, focus. It talks about focus. It talks about time frame, about data analysis. It talks about uncertainty. Um, strategic planning assumes a relatively stable future, whereas futuring may not. It talks about flexibility. So, and, and again, you'll find that in a lot of these responses, you're going to get uh, a summary. So in summary, while strategic planning and futuring have some similarities, they differ in their focus, time frame, data analysis, and approach to uncertainty. So uh, actually a very nice, um, a very nice overview of that. So let's take a look at Eastern Idaho. And I'm going to ask uh, what, what are, oops, let's try this again. There we go. What are five emerging So as we think about us as a college, uh, emerging technologies become uh, important. But let's see, uh, let's see how accurate this might be uh, for us here in Eastern Idaho. So advanced manufacturing, 3D printing, robotics, automation, cybersecurity, what a shock, right? Biotechnology is important. Precision agriculture, renewable energy. None of those are crazy talk at all. All of those are accurate. I could ask for 10. I could ask for 20. Um, it, it really is interesting what this knows and what it can do. I think you know what a SWOT analysis is. So let's let's apply a SWOT analysis to the college. Um, and by the way, strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats, if you don't. So create a, a SWAT. 
So create a SWOT analysis for CEI and strategic planning goals. Okay, so there it goes. It, uh, it started with uh, strengths. So we, we have well-established educational programs, strong uh, partnerships. It knows about us. It knows about us as CEI. Oh, look at that. Limited funding and resources compared to larger institutions. Oh, it's reading my mind. I love this thing. Uh, opportunities. So skilled workers in high demand fields. All of those are really phenomenal. Very well, um, very well uh, constructed, very well con uh, thought, thought through. It took about 30 seconds to do. And then some of the threats. So disruptive technologies, of course, uh, are a significant uh, threat and, and significant things that we really need to consider. So let me, uh, let me conclude with a couple of uh, other prompts, and I'm going to do this with regard to our Northwest accreditation. So let me, uh, let me compose a letter. Uh, let's send it to trustees concerning uh, our upcoming, let's see if it knows what NWCCU accreditation is. And that would be um, April, I think 12 and 13, I think it's, it's right. Let's see, let's see if it can write a letter to our trustees. So there it is. Uh, Dear CEI trustees, as you are aware, which they are aware, thanks to Amy, um, we're going to have an accreditation visit on the 12th and 13th. Um, the team is going to work, uh, our team, you, are going to work diligently to be prepared for that. We're prepared. We're particularly proud of our accomplishments uh, that our students, faculty, and uh, staff have achieved over the year. And um, we'd like to thank the trustees for the continued support. Now, clearly, I would go through and and I would put more particulars in it. But you know, if you're if you're looking at it from a brainstorming perspective, this is a great way to uh, to go through and do this. Let's let's try one other thing here. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask it to um, brainstorm some slogans for College of Eastern Idaho. And again, one of those prompts that I really like would be brainstorm. Brainstorm five prompts. No, how about uh, five slogans? Okay, let's see what happens with this uh, brainstorm five slogans. And... Okay, where learning meets opportunity, uh, building futures, one student at a time, empowering success through education, discover your potential at CEI, and um, innovative education for a dynamic uh, world. If, if there were one of those that we kind of liked, we could drill into it a little bit more and, and look at iteration of that. So, um, Let's say provide five slogans based on this. Let's see what it gives us. Okay, empowering you for success in an ever-changing world, empowering you to thrive in a rapidly evolving uh, environment, um, innovative education, adapting future through cutting edge education, those kind of things. So. I think, uh, I, I hope that we've accomplished what I hope to accomplish today, simply exposing you to this massive world, um, significant, significant to us, significant to uh, many of us, uh, the world of chat GPT, but maybe more broadly, uh, artificial intelligence. So we'll continue to have forums on this and, um, and discussions and those kind of things. So I think this is worth, uh, worth pursuing. So again, if you would like to get uh, a look at the PowerPoint and the prompts that I've used for this, go ahead and send an email. Uh, 
uh, to that email that uh, that Emma uh, had put together. We're going to do this again next week, and I'm going to invite Dr. Amy Brumfield to join me, and we're going to go through and talk a little bit about um, uh, the accreditation that's approaching in uh, in mid uh, April and uh, some of the things that you could and should know about that visit. So again, I thank you all for spending part of your lunchtime to, to come and uh, look and see what this uh, chat GPT was all about. So I want to wish you all a great weekend.